Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, we are going to discuss was one of the very important uh, topic that is validation, validation of the machine learning model. And moreover, we are going to discuss about the various cross validation methodologies in this. Like uh, when we talk of cross validation, we have to check for if there is any other option by uh, with using which we can get more accuracy from the model. Uh, so before proceeding uh, further, let's discuss briefly about validation. So when we talk of validation, what does it mean? Here it means we are having certain training data. And for the training data, we uh, have a machine learning algorithm that is getting a model. And that machine learning model is trained with the training data. And once that is done, we get the output as a model. And that uh, for that output, what we need to check how much accurate our model is. What is the accuracy of the model and how much uh, our model is efficient. So in that case, what we do after getting the model, we will give the input to the model that is uh, to the machine learning algorithm, which will make a certain predictions. And on that, we perform the evaluation. We evaluate the model. Then what we need to do again, we again train the model. And then we again got a model, we get the algorithm, uh, we take the in, we give the input to the model and we uh, simply continue with that process. So this is a life cycle of validation model. So now as we have got the idea of validation, now let's uh, discuss a few points quickly about this. So which is the validation is a process of deciding whether the numerical results quantifying hypothesis relationship between the variables are acceptable or not or they need any further improvement so when we talk of this an error is an estimation for the model which is made after training better known as evaluation of residuals so in the validation process a numerical estimate of the difference is predicted and the original responses is done also called the training error and uh, this only gives us an idea about how well our model does on data used to train it. So it is possible that the model is underfitting or overfitting. So if such problem occurs, then with the evaluation technique, we have to uh, get the improved model, the generalized or unseen data set. Uh, so getting this idea about the model is basically known as cross validation. So uh, here we means that it is a cross validation provides a methods that are used to provide a more robust, more accurate, more efficient model, which works by splitting the data set into multiple training sets and test sets and then running those multiple evaluation multiple times. Like uh, suppose we can say we are having data. So we have taken 90% training, 10% testing. Next time we take 10% training and 20% testing. So we, uh, we keep also on making the changes in randomness of taking the data items from the data set. So we work on a number of techniques to perform cross validation and the ultimate goal of cross validation is to get the robust and more accurate or efficient model or we can say at the end we get the best model. Uh, so what is happening in this case if we look ha at this diagram so firstly we have a data set initial stage we are having data set and which that is that data set is uh, separated into training and testing part as we have seen in many of the algorithms we separate the data into training and testing part so we get training and then test set so when we have the training set what do we do on the training set we know we fit the model on this using the fit function so we fit the model uh, that is we use the algorithm on this training set and we get the trained model. And what is the purpose of test data in that case? Test data is used to make the evaluation or we call it predictions. So at this stage what is happening in between we are having an algorithm which is used to creating the model. So we got trained test split, we got training set and testing set and when we are fitting the model what is being done at that time it means we are creating a model that is the untrained model and we trained the model with that training set. And then we evaluate that model, we got the trained model and we see that the accuracy is 0.67 that is 67%. 
so now we can here we are worried that the accuracy of the model is not acceptable so what we need to do in that case in that case we have to work on a more efficient technique what will happen in that case we can change uh, this in the training separation ratio uh, because we have to keep the same algorithm so we are not changing the algorithm the, uh, in case of cross validation what we are doing we are simply making the changes in this training and testing separation of the data by using a number of ways so here comes the rule of cross validation which is to evaluate the performance of any machine learning model that we need to test it on some unseen data so based on the performance of on unseen data we can say whether uh, a model is underfitting overfitting or the best bell generalized model it is one of the technique that is used to test the effectiveness of the model uh, machine learning models which is also a resampling procedure that is used to evaluate a model if we have a limited data to perform cross validation we need to keep aside sample portion of the data uh, on which uh, is not don't use to train the model so in machine learning we couldn't fit the model on the training data and can't say that the model will work accurately in the real data until we have done the actual testing so we must assure that our model got the correct patterns from the data and it is not getting too much noise also so in that case we use cross validation techniques so now uh, there are few steps of cross validation techniques that is we reserve some portion of data as a sample set using the rest data train the model and then test the model using reserve portion of the data set now have a look at this what is happening this is a sample index sample values and we say uh, we have separated the data into a few folds like say 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 what is happening in this 10 parts of data that is a uh, 10 sample samples from taken we are keep we keep on shifting the training set and test set we have the complete training data we are shifting the training data and uh, test set in the very initial say this is the test remaining is the training then the complete is training this one is test in this case this one is test similarly now this is test and the remaining is uh, training data so this is what is ha actually happening when we talk of cross validation method uh, so now as we have got the idea of cross validation and the importance of cross validation now we will discuss about the various methods of cross validation so we have a number of methods like train test split hold out method k fold cross validation stratified k fold cross validation leave one out cross validation so uh, we will discuss all these techniques one by one so starting with the very first that is the train test split as we can see in this diagram we are having approximately 75 percent of the data as the training set and 25 percent of the data as the test set or you can say this ratio may be 70 to 30 as well so in this approach we randomly split the complete data into training and test set so we are using uh, the separation on sample random basis which may be either 70 30 80 20 and so on as we have done in our practicals uh, so with this approach it is there is a possibility of high wise if we have limited amount of data why this is uh, the problem of high wiseness because we may miss some of the information that is used for required for training now suppose i have taken this much portion as training and remaining is testing now there may be lying certain data items that are in the test part but that may have done uh, a great job if they are chosen as the training set so this may happen when we are using this train test separate so if our data is huge in the amount and our sample test sample and train sample has the same distribution then in that case we can consider this approach as acceptable so next is hold out cross validation so now a basic remedy for this that involving or removing a part of training data and using it to get predictions for the rest of the model of the data the error estimation here tells that how model is doing on the unseen data cross validation set so this is a simple kind of cross validation technique also known as the holdout method although this method doesn't take any uh, 
and this doesn't take any overhead to compute and it is better than the validation but it still suffers from the issue of high variance so the previous one in which we are talking about train test applet the here the problem is of high bias and when we come to hold out cross validation there is the problem of high variance in this case why this variance high variance is occurring because it is not certain which data points will end up in the validation set and the result might entirely be different in the different different sets now this is very important and very much useful that is k fold cross validation now if we look at this diagram we can see that this is the complete data my complete data set now what is happening here we have divided the data into training and test part uh, so again the using the same uh, ratio of 70 30 80 20 or whatever we say now what is happening in this case is here we have divided the data into folds k folds means this k has a value suppose 2 k is 3 k is 4 or whatever in this case we have five folds so this is five fold cross validation this example if we are keeping these four folds then it is four fold cross validation so what is happening what these actually folds are these means um, certain parts or samples that we have taken from the data set now we have fold 1 fold 2 fold 3 fold 4 fold 5 and based on that we have certain subplets so in this in the subplet one what is happening we have taken fold 1 as test and the remaining as my training so in the second subplet we can say fold 2 is the test one and remaining fold 1 3 4 and 5 are the training similarly in subplet 3 fold 3 is uh, serving as the purpose of test and training and so on so here we can see Uh, if we have a look at this diagram what actually is happening in this case we are considering 100% of the data as training and 100% of the data we are using as a testing part so no important part is being skipped in this case like in this uh train test subplet we can see there was some part in the test set that data item was very much important or or of a great use but in this case train test subplet we can say it may be skipped we may have not have mod trained or model with that important feature but when we are working on this k fold cross validation we can see that all the all the samples are uh, in one or the other subplet being considered as the training set so there is probability of getting 100% data as the training data so we are not going to miss any of the important information this is the rule of k fold cross validation so we see if we can see uh, here we separate the data into k number of subsets and we perform the training but leave one uh, subset for the evaluation of the training order we iterate k times like if it is a five fold we will have five subsets if it is a seven fold we have seven subsets and so on uh, so from the k results from the folds can be averaged to produce the single estimation the advantage of this method is that all the observations are used for both training and validation so now in this k fold cross validation the procedure has a single parameter called k that refers to the number of groups that the given data sample is split into so the procedure is often called k fold cross validation a specific value of k is chosen it may be used in the place of k in reference like k equal to 10 uh, so 10 fold cross validation as we have discussed all these things a lot uh, so we can see in this diagram within the with the iterations we are considering each and every part of the training and as well as testing like these are fold 1 fold 2 fold 3 fold 4 fold 5 and five iterations uh, so this is a five fold cross validation so the improved technique in this case one of the better technique in k fold cross validation is the statified k fold cross validation so here we can see where the statified k fold cross validation works is like suppose we have class distribution classification is there a group of female is there a group of male is there so it may happen when we are talking of k fold cross validation uh, have a look at this diagram so here we can say 
this data where which we have chosen as male it may consist of only males and this may be of female so if we are going with this iteration there is a probability we have uh, trained the model for female but not for male similarly in the second case so now what should happen in this case when we have to take this samples what should be done this test should contain male and female both similarly here male and female both here male and female both so in each and every sample in each and every iteration each and every fold each and every sample should consist of all the classes in this case two classes male and female if there is any other uh, class variable so in that case we will be going with that value so here we can say in this stratified we can say suppose this small figure is representing female and this one is male here we can say in each of the, each and every fold each and every fold or sample consist of male and female both so this is the only difference that the splitting of the data into folds may be governed by a criteria which ensures that each and every fold has the same proportion of the observations with the categorical value like class outcome we can say so in case of categorical value it is considering all the categories in this case male and female so this uh, here we say that the stratified k fold is uh, a technique with random folds k random folds and the subset concept of the data points and in stat, uh, stratified cross validation it separates the data into k folds it also ensures that each and every fold is an appropriate representative of the original data the biggest issue with any classification problem is that the problem occurring due to an imbalanced class if we use k fold cv method on the imbalanced data we may cause the training to be biased on the class another important technique in this case uh, in cross validation is leave p out cross validation so here p is having certain value so this approach is working on leaving p data points out of the training data if there are n data points in this case uh, and we are taking p so it means n minus p samples will be used suppose i want to skip three uh, items that items from the population so n minus three samples will be taken uh, that is used to do the training of the model so this process is repeated for all the combinations in which the original uh, sample can be separated so this way the error is averaged for all the trials and we are getting the maximum effectiveness uh, the number of possible combinations is equal to the data points in the sample so here one by an iteration this much is skipped here here so now suppose what is happening actually in this case now suppose p value equal to 5 so in this case it will skip the first 5 so then in second case starting from the second data item up to 6 total 5 in this third to 7 so 7 will be used for uh, 3 to 7 items will be used for uh, testing and remaining training so this process keep on uh, continuing suppose we are having 100 items so in the last iteration it will be 95 to 100 items total sorry 96 to 100 total 5 items will be used for test and remaining will be used for training so this is the role of leaf p out cross validation so in this case again each and every item is considered in one of the iteration as the training and testing part So continuing with that, so in this we say this method is exhaustive in the sense that it needs to train and validate the model for all possible combinations and for moderately large p it can become computationally infeasible. A particular case of this method is when p equal to 1. This is known as leave 1 pi, uh, leave 1 out cross validation. So in this case uh, we have 99 samples of total 100 items. Uh, 99 are to be done so this method is generally preferred over the previous one because it doesn't suffer from the intensive computation as uh, the number of possible combination is equal to the number of data points in the sample or n then we have regularization which is very much important uh, so the word means regularized means to make things regular or acceptable 
Regularizations are the techniques used to reduce the error by fitting a function appropriately on the given training set and avoid overfitting. So we have discussed in the previous videos in which we have uh, discussed that the one of the method to avoid overfitting is regularization. So this is about that uh, regularization technology. Uh, so we will have a separate video on this regularization. So stay tuned for that video. If you have not subscribed my channel yet, then do subscribe the channel for further updations. So thanks for watching the video.